Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss Schedule M3 of Form 1120. In the prior sessions, we looked at Schedule M1 and we looked at Schedule M2. So it's very important to real quick review what's in Schedule M1. In Schedule M1, we looked at our book income or simply put gap income. Then we compare gap income. We reconcile, we did not compare we reconcile gap income to taxable income. What is taxable income? Income under the, the IRS rule. So we looked at the differences because the IRS is interested in learning why you have, for example, high net income for gap purposes, but when it comes to taxes, you have low net income or even a loss. So their concern is why why the discrepancies if there's any we need to see them that's basically what schedule m1 is then in schedule m2 we looked at the statement of retained earnings which is just a review beginning retained earnings plus net income minus net loss minus dividend will give us ending retained earnings and we discuss schedule m2 in details in the prior session in this session we would look at schedule m3 so what is the big idea of schedule m3 before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com farhat accounting lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your cpa exam preparation as well as your accounting courses my cpa material is aligned with your cpa review course such as becker roger wiley gleam miles my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Well, Schedule M3 is simply Schedule M1, remember the reconciling of GAP to the IRS, with much, much more detail. So it's Schedule M1 on steroid. And it applies to large corporation with total asset of 10 million or above. So if you're considered large corporation, this number could change. But generally speaking, if you're a large corporation, well, you're subject to Schedule M3. Now, why? What's the purpose of Schedule M3? Why do they want to see more details about those reconciling items? Well, two reasons. From a shareholder's perspective, it enhances transparency. It shows you higher level of transparency by aligning corporate financial statement we're looking at your gap financial statements for the shareholders and they can compare this to tax to see the difference this increases disclosure for stockholders to let them get more information about the corporation financial position as well as tax obligation the true reason is really identifying aggressive tax practices this is what the irs wants to know by mandating the schedule m3 the irs can effectively identify just look we're going to look at the form identify companies that employ aggressive tax practices what is aggressive tax practices simply put you are using strategy to report income on the books not for tax or deduction on the tax but not on the books because the irs what's the purpose of the irs the purpose of the irs is to increase your income and reduce your expenses you might think isn't that good for me well, it's not good for tax purposes. For tax purposes, you want to reduce your income and increase your expenses. For financial accounting, you want to increase your income and reduce your expenses, right? It's two different objectives. So that's the difference between the two. So the detailed information provided will help the IRS detecting any potentially questionable or non-compliant tax strategies by these corporations. And for example, for the, if you're looking at Enron and WordCom, they might have seen large large discrepancies between the two so let's take a look at schedule m3 part one well part one basically this part here part one it reports the sources of financial net income or net loss it tells you what are the sources from okay the corporation must disclose the origin of the financial net income amount used in the reconciliation because we need to know where is your income coming from is it from 10ks is it from audited financial statements and notice here they will ask you all these questions this could be derived from various sources sec form 10k audited financial statement prepared financial statement or the corporation owned books and records so where is the income coming from also it will ask you do you have any restatements 
did you have any restatements for example here has the corporation income statement has been restated in the prior uh, statement period on line 2a did you have any restatement so they want to know this so this is one simply put asking you a few questions what, what's the source of the inf the source of your income staying on part one here they're asking you to list your income worldwide income notice here your income uh, net income from non-includable foreign entities if there's anything not includable you deducted it we want to know what it is and we're going to work an example showing you how we, we would use these figures but basically there's a lot of lines here any net loss or other includable u.s disre disregarded entities where is your income coming from as well if you have any losses where is it coming from at the end we're going to get to net income this is we're still on part one part two of schedule m3 what we're looking at are reconciling items for income and losses of includable corporation what does that mean well what's happening is this we are looking for items okay income slash loss and those items they could differ for gap this is gap line this is irs column we have gap column irs column in between we have temporary differences we have permanent differences so what's going to happen here you are showing in details any differences between any gap items or irs now if they're the same you don't list them here if they're not the same you list them here so let me just choose one item that i think it will be easy for you to follow in order to understand this concept let's look at interest income on interest income for irs per for gap purposes let's start with gap you reported for example one hundred and thirty thousand dollar of interest income you reported all of your interest income that is fine that is fine however some of that income let's assume thirty thousand of it was municipal interest income so you reported one hundred and thirty thousand of gap income you deduct you take out permanent difference of thirty thousand so for on your tax return you only report one hundred thousand of interest income and if there's any other type of adjustments for cost of goods sold for mark to market income uh for gross foreign distribution previously taxed any discrepancies you would list them here on part three again now we're looking at expenses and we're any expenses that have temporary or permanent differences and i'm going to choose something that's pretty straightforward i'm going to choose fines and penalties if you incur any fines and penalties for gap this this column is gap this column is the irs and we have temporary and permanent differences let's assume for the sake of simplicity you incurred thirty thousand dollar let's use another other than thirty fifty thousand dollar in fees and penalties for some violation well that's fine for gap you could report this expense on your gap on your financial statements it will show however when it comes to taxes you can never deduct this because the irs don't want you to deduct fines and penalties government don't want to finance don't give you a discount they give you not a discount give you a deduction for fines and penalties therefore you will not see this fifty thousand dollar on your tax return and the same concept would apply to all of this is this a, is this a complete list no part three is longer and part two is longer i'm just showing you a sample let's take a look at an example to see how this all fits together in an actual example let's assume noah outdoor corporation specialized in the sale of hunting and fishing equipment noah operates multiple store in colorado utah and nevada additionally it has a subsidiary in canada structured as a canadian corporation now noah being exempt from filing a 10k with the sec include the income generated by its canadian subsidiaries in its audited financial statement so being exempted doesn't have to report this income the financial statement indicate when, when we look at the total financial statement 35 million for the current year this is what it shows however the canadian corporation not consolidated by noah for tax purposes therefore it's not includable in the tax return therefore if they generated five million from that corporation so the tax the financial statement will show when noah shows their financial statement it shows let's do 35 million then what's going to happen for tax purposes let's assume that's the only reconciliation we're going to only see 30 million now we want to see why for gap you are reporting 35 and for irs you are reporting 30. so we will do this on part one line 5a schedule m3 so here's what we'll do for worldwide consolidated net income we're gonna put 35 million this is part of it 
Then notice here on line 5a, not, income not included from foreign entities. We're going to do 5 million. And here, net income is now 30 million. Now, for tax purposes, we were able to explain the difference between 35 and 30 million. Why? Because we had a subsidiaries in Canada that's not taxable in the US. Now, it says here, attach a statement. Well, guess what? We'll attach a statement explaining what we just did. That, you know, we had this, this Canadian entity, and this Canadian entity is not reported, consolidated for tax purposes. Therefore, it's not included. That's all that we have to say. What should you do now? As as a CPA candidate, as an enrolled agent, accounting student, go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, MCQs, true, false, multiple choice. That's going to help you do what? Learn Schedule M1, 1120, Schedule M2, 1120, Schedule M3, much, much more in details. Good luck. Study hard. As always, stay safe.